correct by a show of hands? Okay, great. Has anybody here been to one of our consumer panel conferences? Okay, so a few of you. Um, here at Direct, I see our panel walking and now I'm officially breathing again. <laughs> so, uh, David, Michelle, Brandy, Shar, Brooke, and Pat. Ah, you're all here! I thought my name was going downhill really quick. Um, I did. I did have, I know they did follow my instructions perfectly. Um, go ahead and take a seat. David, if you would just sit right center, since you are the man, right in the center. Yeah. <laughs> since you are the man on the panel today. So while they're getting seated and comfortable, um, we have a very short amount of time to go through a lot of information that we are really, really just thrilled to be a part of. We think this is a very, very important conversation that um, the industry needs a little more of. Here at Direct is the brainchild of a $120 million producing realtor in New Jersey. And she was noticing a huge shift in her business in terms of the behavioral patterns of her consumers. And she wanted to get a better understanding of that. And the best way to do that was to go and directly ask the consumers herself. So she did a very small, personal, just had a third party recruit some consumers come in and share kind of what they were doing, and it was very successful. The feedback was amazing, and, and so here we are. Um, we've now been in business um, three years. We It's blood, sweat, and tears. Everybody in this room knows about that. Um, we're very excited to say that we've taken our business international this year into France, into Canada. Um, next year we're in Spain and Australia, and we're, you know, we are here at your service. Um, we were founded to deliver the voice of the real estate consumer. In some situations, it's the actual realtors like it is today, and in a lot of situations, it's the real estate consumer, the buyers or sellers. So um, today, thank you to the committee for having us, um, putting your faith and, and confidence in us to deliver some amazing value. Um, we're just gonna get right into this conversation. We're gonna talk to this amazing panel about their perspective on education, what's being offered today, what they like, what they lean towards, why they choose certain classes, certifications, designations, why they avoid others, and everything in between. And we hope that you find some great value in that. So thank you so much for being here. And um, we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna ask you to just give your, uh, oh, before we go, one more thing. Um, there's a range in age on this panel. Uh, 24 to 63. There's a range in years in business from one year in the business to 37. There's a range in production from the 6 to 12 range to over 101 transactions. And there's a range in the number of certifications and designations held from 0 to 9. So um, we feel that this is quite representative of the industry today, if you will, and we're looking forward to some great insight. So tell me, we're just going to start right here with Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Nice to meet you, IRL. Um, how many, uh, let, let's just start with um, how many certifications and designations you hold? Absolutely none. None? Can we move the microphones over? I know sometimes this is a little bit hard, but. And I have a quiet voice It's just quiet. Okay, if you could just sit a little closer to the microphone. And push the um, button. Push the button. When you're talking? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So you have zero certifications. Okay. Um, Tell me about what you choose and why you choose. Is there a reason you've avoided it? Have you spent time in other areas? Um, my whole background, um, I actually have a grad, I went to grad school, I have a master's degree, and I've always kind of looked at it, it did, like designations didn't fit into my business plan, and I just felt like having a master's degree would look better to my clients than a designation that they don't even know what it is. So. Okay. You feel that they don't know what a designation or certification is? Okay. Are there any out there that you're considering? None. None? Okay. And would you tell the group where you're from, what state you're from? I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. And um, we're just going to go on down the line. We're, we're going to get to all kinds of information, but we're going to go here um, next to Charlene. Um, where are you from? What state? I'm from Kansas. Hi, Karen. Um, <laughs> And, and how many certifications and designations do you hold? Am I the one with the nine? I, I, I have, you name it, I've got it. 
because um, I'm a big proponent that education is power, and power in this business is very important for production. Okay, okay. How many of those certifications and designations are not? Do you know? Um, all but two. Okay. Do you feel that it's important to have NAR's blessing on the designations and certifications to have them recognize that? In some cases, but in some cases it's not necessary. Um, some of the ones that I've had, um, I went for the education value. Okay, okay. Um, post acquiring, which certification has given you the most value? CRS. CRS, okay. And are there any certifications that you're considering obtaining at this point? Probably, I'm looking more into the commercial one right now, and I'm looking into the commercial CRS broker. Not the commercial, but the, the broker portion of the CRS. Okay, perfect. So, we're going to go down to Pat. Pat, tell us where you're from. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Good to have you. Thank you. And tell us about your certifications and designations. I have, I think you're, I have four NAR certifications, and then I have another one or two that are non-supported non ones. Okay. In choosing those certifications and designations, was it important that they were recognized, that they were NAR? I could care less. You could care less? Yes. Okay. Mine is all about, does it make me money? If I go to take this class and get the certification, will I make money? Okay. Okay. Um, Post-acquiring, same question to you, which one do you feel has provided you the most? Two. CRS, definitely hands down, changed my business. That was, it's, it's a game changer. Second one was, was the CIAS for um, uh, investors that I took. It's a non-NAR one, and that one made me a lot of money. So what I look for, will it make me money, will it help my team grow, that's all I look for. So how did you make that determination with CRS, for example? And I, I'm going to come back to you and ask you the same question. Well, CRS um, was, again, I got mine a long time ago, obviously, probably back in the 90s. Um, it was a standard bearer of education, and um, I came into this industry from, uh, as, a, as a professional musician in Nashville, my husband moved to Baton Rouge to teach at LSU, and so I knew no one, so I built my business from basically scratch doing open houses, and I just couldn't quite figure out how you did it, you know, because everybody that made money, they were, had lived in Baton Rouge forever, they knew people, I knew no one, so I knew there had to be a way to do this, just like learning a musical instrument, there had to be a way, and whenever I took my first CRS club class, it was exactly step by step how to build your business. And that to me was huge. I take it but that, that was the one that was like it was um, it was just it was so practical. I, I you, so practical gave you steps, took steps. the thinking and imagination you, out you of do it. This, this is what's gonna happen. Follow you think big, this is gonna happen and it, uh, the classes are so fabulous for that. So they're practical, useful information and I love CRS in case I can't tell. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that, Charlene? You just mentioned CRS, so well, the, the reason I went, I was so excited about CRS because I saw it as the doctorate degree in real estate. And so I wanted to get my doctorate. I, didn't, I only got a you know, general education in music in, in, in my college career. But I wanted to have the doctorate, and so that's what I saw CRS as. I had to take the GRI course first, and I couldn't wait to get through that, so I get my CRS. Mm -hmm. in, in what ways has that provided value and continued to provide value? It's the educational opportunity for practic practical experience. It's helping you learn what to do, how to do, by people who are experienced and show success. At least it was. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I just want to piggyback on that too. Um, I'm not sure CRS today is what it was when I took it, uh, but I can tell you, I'm, I've taken um, the CRS 210 class four times, and my board has hired uh, Ed Hatch to do it again for us because that's who I always take it with because I believe in it so strongly. It's, uh, build a referral based business. So um, most of the CRS instructors that I know would contact top agents and get information from them so they had something good to put to their presentation. That wasn't just when they did business 20 years ago, but what's going on in today's today's market and with today's realtors. So to me that's really important. It's important that they have the practical in the trenches yes. experience using what you're being taught. Awesome. Let's move to David. Where are you from? I'm from Coke. I'm from St. Louis. St. Louis. Missouri. Okay. And certifications, designations? Uh, I've only been doing this about eight months, so I do not have any yet. Um, okay. The two I'm interested in, though, are the two that you just mentioned. Uh, working with, uh, I'm interested in the CRS, and then I'm also interested in uh, anything that gives me more credibility working with investors, because that's a niche I really want to really work on. 
Okay, got it. Um, let's go on down the line. How many certifications? Does I have three more. Um, I'm from Tampa, <coughs> and I have four designations, two are NAR designations. Two are NAR. Yeah. Okay. And was it important to you in looking at the designations? And David, same question to you. You mentioned two that you're looking at. Is it important that they were NAR recognized in NAR designations and certifications? To me, they're not because when I, you know, everyone I've seen that has them, I look at them and if I don't know what they mean, I know the consumer's not going to know what they mean. When you just see, you know, three letters after your name, sure. um, I'm more interested in the educational value and actually getting something out of it than just putting it on the business card. Okay. Your yeah, thoughts? I agree. I actually threw that out there. I have my master's degree too. And um, so it took a lot to get the master's degree. And for some of these designations, you can sit in a class for eight hours and you get a designation. But I took it a step further and I sent it out to all my Facebook friends and I have about 1,500 of them. And I said, if you, when you're looking for a realtor, do, does it matter what letters they have behind their name? And, and it was a resounding, I don't know what that is. So it's more about you. Mm -hmm. Anybody up on the panel with designations and certifications found that to be different? Has it helped you in attracting clients? Yes, I, I put it on everything. I put my, my initials on business card. When I go to my listing presentations, I explain what the difference is, and, and I go back to, I've got the PhD in real estate. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't. I don't put any designations, because no one cares. They care about me and what I'm gonna do, so it doesn't matter. Everybody, this is Brandy. Brandy, where are you from? She's the quiet one, huh? <laughs> Um, yes, my name is Brady Perel from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. Um, I have three NER designations, but see, I don't, that's just like a fallacy. Who cares if they're NER designations? But that's anyway. Um, and then one designation, uh, GR, GRI, ABR, CRS. Um, now, I did it strategically. Um, I also got my CRS because I went to work for a broker who had been bus doing business longer than I'd been alive. And I saw where she got her business, and she got her business from CRS. So, dude, I need my CRS. That's a no. That's a no contendo. And um, so, I got my CRS five years ago. I've been in business ten years, and it was the practicality aspect of, of what it offered. Um, it was the investment. I also do investors, so huge niche in that. I took the class with Pat Davy. It was great. Um, I actually did my GRI because I needed the broker hours, so it was all combined into one. It wasn't a matter of um, what NAR says, it was, okay, this is a top agent, this is a top agent, what do they have after them and what don't they have? That's what I wanted. So anybody up here on the panel taken a course 